Hi, I'm Eric Dewey. And this is Steve O'Mooney. And I'm Matthew Renfro. And we're Socially Awkward. You're listening to another great production on the Four Eyed Radio Network. Check out more shows at foureyedradio.com. It's your good pal, Steve-O, from the 4i Radio Network. I'm here to talk to you about a wonderful designer we all know, uh, Revenge Lover. Illustrates and designs that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, please visit revengelover.com. And just do yourself a favor and tell them Steve-O sent you. I know it really doesn't count for anything, but, I mean, come on. Who's gonna, who are you going to trust? You're going to trust somebody else? No, you're going to trust me, Steve-O. Because, face it, I'm awesome. Hey guys, this is Kyle from the Longbox Cast. I just wanted to come and let you know that for the next month and a half or so, I am not going to be on the show. I am in the process of buying a house, so I need to start packing and all that fun stuff of house buying. So, for the meantime, we are looking to replace me right now. Um, If you would like to become... A podcaster, or have always been, you know, just want to try it out, see what it's all about. Let Steve know. Um, find him up on his Twitter page. He will uh, get a hold of you. Hopefully, he's somewhat bad about that, but who knows? Maybe he'll change for this. Fingers crossed. Anyways, so if you want to give it a shot, see what happens. Who knows? If uh, Steve likes you a lot, maybe we'll make you a regular on the show. Um, yeah. Uh, why not? What does it hurt? Greetings, true listeners. It is episode 60. That's right, we made it to episode 60. Who the hell thought we'd make it this far? Definitely not me, and I don't think Steve either. So, we got a special episode for you guys. We've got two special guests with us. Eric Berry, you might recognize him from Ranger Command Power Hour. Starfleet Escape Podcast, and two previous episodes of Longbox's cast. Making it lucky like number three. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> it was like, oh, hey, how's it going, guys? Never mind. <laughs> also with us today is Jordan, also known as... How do you want me to call you? Do you want me to call you Den Obi-Wan Kenobi from your Twitter? Or... <laughs> no, just Den O is fine. All right, also known as Deno at Tok... Er, yeah, we're going to call you Deno. Okay. <laughs> I'll deal with all that stuff later. <laughs> and you said I had my shit together. I thought you did. I got this far. Um, yeah. We're going to be talking about the upcoming season of TV shows, of Flash, Arrow, maybe a little bit of Supergirl, not Constantine. And oh, too soon. Uh, well, a little bit of Constantine. Yes, yeah, a little. Maybe, yeah. And unfortunately, maybe Gotham. Nope. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. I will leave at that point. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about Gotham either. You know what? Like, got villains. Uh, that's all it is. Oh, uh, so, okay, Eric Berry is the only one that's on board with Gotham. Okay. No, I'm not. I I dropped out of that halfway in that first season. Uh, uh, let's, oh, guys, let's just do this and take care of it first. Gotham, shit's going to happen, I guess. I don't know. If you're a Batman fan, you pretty much already know shit, but this is just really uh, just another nail in the coffin with stuff. Is like, this guy may be something. This guy is something. Is he the Riddler? I fucking think so. <laughs> Done. Yeah, because I, all I've been seeing are these new trailers for this season, and I have no idea what happened on the back half of the first season. I don't care. Apparently, uh, Jim Gordon's uh, fiance went all batshit crazy, so I don't know. Unintended? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The only thing I need to know about Gotham is Gordon's new girlfriend is in the Deadpool movie. Done. I'll put it this way. Uh, Gotham started out as a good idea, but fuck it. I don't care. It just goes Batman at this point. No one cares about the, Gotham. 
the idea that anyone would give a shit about an 11-year-old Bruce Wayne is absurd. So, no, it didn't even start out with a good premise. Yeah, uh, I saw the premiere when we were in San Diego last year, and I thought it was garbage. I'm surprised it even lasted to a second season, but that's just me. Especially with Fox. I mean, they're usually pretty cancel-happy. Well, this is the thing I've learned. If I hate a show, Fox keeps it. <laughs> And that's why we still have Arrow. <laughs> if I love a show, Fox will cancel the fuck out of it. They'll even resurrect it for like a minute and then kill it again. Steve, stop liking The Flash. <laughs> but I, I don't know. It's just it's like with CW, Gotham. So we're fine. No, with, Gotham, with Gotham, why not make him like an 18-year-old Bruce Wayne? You know, someone that's getting ready to train and maybe is closer to the age of all these villains that he fights. Yeah, when that's comes my... Batman and they're all 50? Like, what the fuck? That's been yeah, my that's... primary problem with the show, mm -hmm. yeah. is the age gap difference, because you're talking about people that should, relatively speaking, be near the same age as Bruce Wayne, but instead you have people who are, like, twice his age already <laughs> active. I mean, the whole point of Batman is that he inspires the madness that he fights, not that he is a response to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's the problem I'm having. When they keep teasing that new guy who's supposed to be like, this could be the Joker, I'm like, technically the Joker never appeared until, like, Batman was Batman for, like, a year. Right. Exactly. And it's like, and technically the Batman created the Joker if you go with how many different storylines they have with that. So, whether he was the Red Hood, whether he was Jack Nicholson, whether... <laughs> Well, and it's just, you know, the Joker's explicitly stated so many times over the decades that he is a response to that, that he was born from Batman. You know, that it, it's absurd to me that the character could exist in any other way without him. Yeah, so, well, we'll see what happens. I mean, most likely I'll probably, wa I, I most likely have to watch it or skim through it just because I have to keep up with the other two hosts on Socially Awkward because they really enjoyed Gotham, and I was just like, I kind of tapped out, like, I forget when, I was just like, ugh. But I don't, I don't think anyone blames you for tapping out on that one. Look, if you want to carry a Batman story, just play the Batman Arkham series game for crying out. Just don't play the first one, Origins. <laughs> oh well, yeah, it's pretty buggy. Yeah, but um, anyways, uh, Kyle, do we want to jump into sponsors real quick and then <laughs> start the show? Or oh yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have sponsors. Sorry, Gotham kind of just. <laughs> Damn it, Gotham! You ruined things again. Yeah. To listen to this show, you can find us on 4 Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, Zoom Marketplace, Blackberry Podcast, Blueberry Podcast, Mirror Guide, Double Twist, YouTube, Swell Radio, SoundCloud, and Player FM. And if I remember correctly, we're canceling one of those, so SoundCloud. Yes, You can no longer find yeah. us on SoundCloud. <laughs> You, you can Zoom. find all the old, old episodes. Yes, you can find old episodes on SoundCloud, but we are no longer going to be there because numbers were basically non-existent for us. And like, SoundCloud sucks. Yeah. Well, you said Zoom Marketplace, and I was just surprised that still exists. <laughs> <laughs> I just read what's in front of me. It's been here since I started. So We are brought yeah, to you by... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, and I'm bad at editing stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. That's okay. All right, we are brought to you by Revenge Lover Designs, illustration and designs that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit revengelover.com. We are also brought to you by Fancy Escape, comics, cards, and collectibles. You can find them in the Virginia Beach area or find them online at fancyescape.com. Also check out their eBay account. Just look for the user ID 50Batman. And as you know, we are proud supporters of Comic Care Comics. If you have any used-up comic books that you don't need anymore that are from the 90s area era or late 80s, as long as though they are not New Mutants 98, donate them to a Comic Care Comics. They will take them, they will give them to the kids who need them in the hospitals, and you will make someone's day. Yay! <laughs> all right. So, reason so, why we're all here today. Flash. Because I'm we're apparently... <laughs> Doing crossover episodes just like the Flash and Arrow now. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah, we were gonna call this episode, if I remember correctly, talking. 
talking. Talking, talking. This show doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to include mine. It's okay. That's why I only include talking because, uh, yeah. You know, talking yeah. It's box power hour. There we go. Yes, long long box talking power hour. There you go. Yeah. Or how about yeah. talking long in the power of boxes? <laughs> Yes. Wait, even no, no. So, so, like, wait, power box long hour? That's good. <laughs> it kind of sounds like a sexual aid of some sort, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, the that's what I was, I was trying to make it sexual. The power box long hour. <laughs> so, I apologize, Kyle's mom. And if your power box lasts for more than one long hour, at <laughs> least medical attention. Yeah, turn off podcast immediately and head to your can nearest. You experience any of the following? No, they can still Dizziness. listen to the podcast on their way to the hospital. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did that last week. All right. Wait, what? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Okay. <laughs> like, yes. Anyways, um, Kyle, let's uh, let's talk about your you you subscribe to uh, the comic block. Yeah, um, I was thinking about getting back with uh, Nerd Block again, and then I saw that they had a new thing called Comic Block, and they actually got an email about it saying, if you're a huge Spider-Gwen fan, sorry, Jordan, I know you're not, oh, uh, well. uh, you'll love this, and I end up getting this really sweet shirt with it. It's basically Spider-Gwen, but it's Venom. So That's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw the picture. It was really kind of badass. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I hope you saw because I sent it to you. I'm trying to camera uh, off. I can you know, show you guys. I'm drunk half the time. So what else is in Comic Block? I got Ooh. this T-shirt right here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then with it came three comic books. Um, DC Comics Bombshell Number One. It's a good book. I got awesome. red. Sonya and Conan the Barbarian. Hmm. And then final was a comic block exclusive, X Files, issue number one, with the toy variant that everyone seems to be doing lately, which we are actually giving away on our Twitter page. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and then I believe the two other comic books are going into our long box box. So, yeah, really cool. so that was basically all in it. I mean, it was it's cheaper than uh, Nerd Block. It's fourteen dollars instead of twenty. So I couldn't beat that price, and I decided to get it for like three months. So they gave me like a ten percent discount or something like that. Very cool. I have tried the whole box thing before, yeah. and I just didn't, we, I just don't like it. Let's you, let's I, again, listeners. He's talking about a like a subscription box, not just going around and tasting other boxes. <laughs> yes, yes, this is correct. I'm not yeah, like a I, box bandit or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I'm with Jordan. I tried the whole subscription box thing with Loot Crate. I did that for a year. And after I got my third air freshener and second pair of socks, I was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, I tried it once and was really disappointed with the shoelaces and stickers I got. <laughs> and then uh, I swear I canceled it, but they charged me for a second month anyway. So. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so I was very pissed about that. Yeah, you gotta like cancel it before a certain date or something. No, I did. That's the thing. I looked up their policies on it, but they'd already taken the payment. And when I complained about it, they were like, "Well, tough shit, you know." <laughs> Here's your second crappy box. <laughs> Here's your Terminator keychain and your Optimus Prime Tron shirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, at least you got a shirt in that one. So. I did. Yeah, that's one thing I like about Comic Block and Nerd Block. You at least always get a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that there's that silence right there, I take it. Yeah, this show. I, can we just call the show like the things we hate now? Because it's just we went to Gotham and now we hate I, Loot Crate and. I'd be really good at that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. I'm, I'm. I would excel there. 
It's like, uh-huh. what are you most looking forward to this upcoming TV season? How about what are you, what do you hate? <laughs> All right, well, uh, <laughs> let's see. How do you feel about iZombie? Oh, yeah, I love it. Okay, well, oh, we yeah, can talk I, about I, that. I love iZombie. I fell a little bit behind, so I'm catching up now on Hulu. Uh, I'm about halfway through the first season. I absolutely love iZombie. I think it's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's very good stuff. And Rose McIver has... I know there are lots of people that like RPM, Power Rangers RPM, but I still think she's a much better actress now than she was then. Oh, so. definitely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. she's pretty good looking, so... <laughs> yes, that yeah. helps very much. <laughs> Does anyone else feel like she got shorter just seeing uh, her in iZombie? No. <laughs> I mean, she's kind of short out. anyway. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess I just never... I'm just thinking about RPM, and I'm like, I feel like she was taller, but that was probably just... Most uh, of the Power Ranger actors aren't that tall. Just meeting a lot of them at, like, Power Morphicon, I'm surprised at really how short a lot of them are, so... Oh, okay. Hmm. She's she's a little short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> so, if that's the case, they'll all sit there and go like, it's time to midget time! dun 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 <laughs> So technically what you're saying is there's there really is a height requirement to be a Power Ranger then, so I'm pretty much fucked because I'm like six foot. Well, I mean, they've had, they've had tall Power Rangers, but I don't know. I think they cast some actors based on, like, the Japanese stunt people. Just mm, for the well, they got to have someone who at least remotely matches up to the right height. Yeah. It's got to be believable, so that in between scenes you're not like, why is that guy 6'3"? Normally he's like 4. And he's drinking a beer all the time. <laughs> but uh, what what's going on with season 2 of iZombie? Um, I'll be honest, I don't think I've actually seen much uh, for season 2 well, of the, the They just released the trailer for it about uh, 3 or 4 days ago. Oh. Um, yeah, so I did see that. So yeah, is it so going to be coming up? Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, is it going to be coming out with all the other shows that are starting up, and they're going to push that one back to another, like, spring release, or... Uh, it's supposed to be just regular fall season lineup with everything else. So. Yeah, I, I remember the... I know the trailer you're talking about. I remember seeing it. It's coming out right after the Flash premieres. Yeah, it's coming oh, okay. out on October yeah, it still comes out Tuesdays when Flash does, so... Yeah. Glad they're keeping that schedule. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta catch up on iZombie. All it's, right. it's, uh, it's a solid watch. You should at least check oh, it out yeah. at some point. No, no, no. I've seen, uh, I've seen about, I think, five or... No, eight episodes, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I just need to finish off the season so I can get ready for the next season. And that's uh, how Steve kills the show every week. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, going on with more things Jordan hates. Um, Shield. How do you feel about the Shield? Oh, I don't hate it necessarily. I just, <laughs> I, I mean, I just find it to be a rather boring use of my time most of the time. That's all. It just doesn't really uh, excite okay. me to watch. I watch it because it's new and, you know, I'm kind of interested in what's happening, but at the same time, it doesn't really compel me to watch it either. Okay. I just saw the recent trailer for, uh, for the new S.H.I.E.L.D. season, and it seems like... <laughs> This year is just all about the Inhumans. And they did this, like, tease at the end, like, ooh, who's this going to be? And I'm like, I think it's just a souped-up Reyna. Like, she mutated even more. That's what it looks like. No, there's a, it's a character. It's an actual named character. It's not her. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's an Inhuman named Lash, who's from the more current volume of the series that spun out last year. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's cool that they're adding an, another named character, but these aren't the named in humans that a lot of longtime fans would really be familiar with from, like, mm-hmm. you know, Medusa or Karnak or even Lockjaw, something like that. Yeah. Okay, let's just go to Flash because I know that's what everyone wants to talk about. Well, we can touch upon these real quick. Walking Dead's coming back. I haven't seen the new uh, series that started. Anybody I, seen that? Not as seen- much. I've seen the first episode of Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, it really hasn't compelled me to watch the second episode. It was an hour and a half of this family's problems. I don't like. I don't give a shit. Just give me the zombies. They're like die already. Yeah, it's. 
Mm-hmm. I, I don't think any of these characters are very interesting. They're just cookie cutter family tropes. And I mean, it's cool seeing the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. Um, and they kind of joke about that in the intro, like you know, they they pan up and it's like they they linger and and the music starts playing like really suspiciously. But you know, the city is populated with people, so it's like, ooh, all of these people are fucked. And yeah. It's, it's just that kind of thing, and there's one part uh, in the first episode where um, the teacher, mom, or whatever, she, like, walks in on the principal, and he's, like, motionless next to the, like, the speakers for, or whatever, and, it, like, she's approaching him from behind, and the music starts swelling up, and he turns around, like, hey, like, they're they're trying to make it, like, Oh no, is he a zombie? Oh, nope, it's fine. We faked you out. Fuck you. Yeah. And it's just they're, I they're, mean, doing, they're doing all these tricks and it's it's dumb because we know what's going to happen. So, I don't know. I, I, I I'm not I'm not rushing to see the second episode. I actually don't like Walking Dead. So <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> That's that's legitimate. I'm not just saying that for fun. I actually don't like the regular show anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I figure. I'm, I'm just trying to hit these uh, points so we can just go. Uh, I'm actually keeping tally marks, and by the end of the episode, I'll see who hates everything the most, and they. Will oh no, win. it's me. You don't have to it's, do that. It's Jordan. It's Jordan. <laughs> I really do hate most things, but uh, Walking Dead for me was personal because I remember reading the book for years, and then when the first season started, I was like, okay, yeah, sure, I can watch this, and then it was like nothing like it at all, so that was very hard for me to even care when it was, you know, I was expecting, like, an adaptation, not some sort of weird mishmash of new shit, Um, but I've met Robert Kirkman before, so that sort of colors my opinion of how much I care about Walking Dead as well. Oh. You had a bad experience with Robert Kirkman? Yes. Did he rape you? (laughs) <laughs> where, where on the zombie did he touch you? No, no, no. But he has been in my work before, and he has been a total dick bag, so that helps. No. Oh, yeah. I, I've met him. He was actually pretty cool. He actually gave me the first uh, volume of The Walking Dead for, to me for free. So did you see him at a con, I guess? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got a good public game face, but he's not so cool when it's like a smaller setting. Hmm. Yikes. He used to, I mean, obviously he's from here, but, I mean, he also used to shop locally. Uh, the store he would get his comics from is one of the other stores in town here. But uh, he's had to come into mine once or twice previously. So. Yeah. Well, when he walks in, you should be like, ah, uh, dead man walking. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like, the, the next time he comes in, I'm just going to ask him to leave. <laughs> but before you do that, you could be like, look. Check out the long box cast on the four I radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will be sure to advertise. You're Thank correct. you. Before before you before you throw him out of his door. That's all I ask. Hey, why don't you check out the long box cast and now get the fuck out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I know plenty of people who like Walking Dead. I used to really like the book as well, but it it much like the show to me has gotten into the this, like, general uh, repetition sort of thing where the storylines just rinse and repeat themselves. So, that yeah. sort of kills it for me. Well, I'm just waiting for it to, you know, end, and then Rick wakes up and it was all just a dream, you know? Well, they already did that once in the book with the spoof ending for number 75. So. <laughs> I love that ending. Wow, I didn't even get that far into the comics then. Damn it. I like, I, I mean, uh, you know, you're about the show. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you read issues 1 through 48 where everyone sort of dies and a few people survive the prison and you think, this would be a great ending to anything, and then it just drags on and yep. on endlessly. Okay, so, um, Walking so Dead... I win, the hate, I win the hate contest. There, okay, well, it. I was just going to say, Walking Dead, if you haven't seen the new series, you can go check it out. If you don't like uh, it, don't check it out. You throw them out of <laughs> your comic book stores. And uh, new season starts in October. And then Supergirl, uh, anyone excited about this? Or Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I yes. watched the first episode when it leaked. Me too. Um, I still haven't seen that. It's fantastic. This is going to be such a great show. 
it is very, very solid. It, it shows that, you know, you've got some of the same team from the Flash and Arrowverse on it. I mean, with Andrew Kreisberg. But, uh, yeah, it's it's got the same high-quality production values. So Good. Good. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, cause I used to watch Glee, so when I saw that she was going to be Supergirl, I was like, okay, sweet. Well, and she's like, we got to fight a villain, guys. Let's sing about it and how we're going to do it. <laughs> Hey, now, uh, the Flash, uh, Barry Allen never did that, so. Yeah, he did. He did sing that karaoke night. Yeah, but he didn't sing about fighting a villain. Oh. Face slam. <laughs> no idea where I was going with that. Yeah, Supergirl's going to be awesome. <clears throat> so we'll come down to the meat and potatoes of the podcast, apparently. I emphasize on the meat. I like meat. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Arrowverse. I guess we'll start with Arrow since that trailer just hit the other day. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say it because I need to watch the... I'm going to watch Arrow finally and try to get into it and everything like that, but uh, what the fuck is up with the new costume for the one guy? Oh, for Diggle? Yeah, he <laughs> looks like a really, really bad Magneto. <laughs> yeah, okay. What the hell? <laughs> It's Black Nito. <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, and that's still that they released, It's he doesn't have the visor down that he does in the trailer. Um, it so still he, looks bad. It, it looks better when that's closed, and it makes him yeah. look a little bit more like uh, what I can only assume they're basing him on, which is Guardian. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Yeah, I'm they like, you know what? Who that is. I'm going to give Arrow a shot this season. I'm going to cut up, I'm gonna, and then I see that picture, I go, fuck this, and I flip the table. So. Uh, I, one job. I hope we get to see j- a little bit of his new domestic life before they start, you know... Destroying going- it. To start destroying it, yeah, exactly. I, cause I, I kind of like that shot of him running in the opening of the trailer, and it's like, oh, cool, he's got a house now. <laughs> I thought it was kind of unhinged to see him smiling and happy. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the thing, it's like you know they're just gonna fuck this up for him. So I want to see him be a little bit happy before they just dive right in and fuck it all up. So, I, yeah. hope I, I, hope, I hope after when he's running like that and he pulls back the hood, he's all smiling. He's like, you know, Barry Allen was right. Running is smun. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised he got the house so quickly. I mean, I know he's rich and all, but like, I'm in the process of trying to buy a house, and it's taken me at least about a good two months. He's also Oliver, you know, Queen, for crying yeah, out loud. Even still. You know, he, I mean, he lost all of his money. I think did, a lot of well, that is... Didn't they say there's like a four-month gap between seasons three and four? Yeah. So, that's enough time. And then unpack everything. I mean, I don't know. Not to mention, <laughs> like... you have a lot. <laughs> um, can, I, can I go back to the... Uh, can I actually just go back to a, a normal statement? It's a show. <laughs> <laughs> no, it must be believable to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, because them dressing up and fighting evil in this city is... So, so the, the guy who runs, like, Speed of Sound, the shrinking guy... The <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's all believable. Guy. That can happen. Oh wait. Well, do you ever think? I was just about to say, do you ever think maybe he called in the Flash? He's like, "Look, I need my house unpacked in almost we, four we already, months." We already seen how fast Barry can unpack and pack a house. True. That was actually in the show. Yeah, that's right. Um. Okay. So we see a, a shot of um the new sign. So now it's it's Star City instead of Starling City. About time. Because they all assume Ray is dead. Yes. Yeah. And, holy crap, Constantine. Yes. Yes, that was actually pretty cool. It was a really brief shot, but I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Well, okay. Constantine... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say about Constantine, did anybody even watch his show that of was course. on NBC? Yeah. I thought it was a great show, actually. I mean... What? Whoa, wait, the guy who hates everything? (laughs) This is the one show. (laughs) Yeah, I actually really liked Constantine. I was really sad to see it get canceled. When shows like Gotham can remain on TV, you're telling me Constantine doesn't appeal to an audience? No, it didn't appeal to me. 
No, I thought it was fantastic. I watched I was the like, first episode, but I zoned out on the second one, and then even when I it, like, I turned around, going like, "Oh yeah, I left the TV on. That's right." <laughs> wow, it was kind of sad. I was, I was. The problem I have with it, I don't think NBC did a good job with the series. Uh, I really felt like the show could have done a lot better on, like, I think Kyle and I talked about it either. I'm like, I'd rather would have seen Constantine on CW because they've done so well with the Supernatural series, figuring, like, okay, they could probably do this better on this. As long as, long as they don't make it, like, the teeny bopper where it's all like, I'm Constantine, and I'm in high school, and I see demons. and <laughs> Well, that's exactly why a show like that wasn't on the CW because of the repetitiveness of two Supernatural-themed, like, demon right. hunter shows. But I also said probably... It could have. I thought it would have been a lot better on like a Netflix series or something like that. So, <clears throat> well, I'm I'm just glad that like for the first time really that that I've watched TV, we get a character from one network crossing over on a show on a completely different network. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I, 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 oh, go ahead, guys. I was, yeah, I was just going to say, I think the only reason why they were able to do that because they're like, we can't do that with Constantine. Warner Brothers, we own uh, all DC characters. Bring them <laughs> on over! <laughs> well, you know, it, it helps that Amel was so, like, hot and heavy for making it happen, too. I mean, he yeah. was really sold on the idea. Mm-hmm. He wanted to make this happen and make it a reality. So I think that that says something when the, the star that brings your network uh, the, the acclaim and the money all these years is like, hey, can we do this? Sure, why not? <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's more than just a one-off. Yeah, I, I would hope so, but for now they're saying it's just this one episode for convenience's sake. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm surprised. I would have thought you guys would have liked the Constantine show itself. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed the uh, Doctor Fate Easter egg in the first episode. Oh, I mean, the show overall I thought was really compelling, especially with that sort of aha moment at the end of the final episode that'll never be resolved since it was canceled, but. Maybe I mean, they'll have a throwaway line in, <laughs> in there. I mean, it, it sucks that they were building up to this, you know, rising darkness thing, and you find out who's behind it, and then it's like, hey, fuck you, it's over. I'm probably going to give it a second chance if I find on, like, Hulu or someplace possibly illegal. I don't know yet. I mean, the last couple episodes were very well worth it, I thought. Okay. I'll take your uh, word for it. Well. I mean, it may have been... I'll give it to you. You know what? I'll admit it. The first few episodes of that show really are episodic, procedural junk. I mean, they are. But it, it does build up a nice ongoing plot eventually. Okay. No, okay. Uh, if, you, if you're basing it on the fact that you may have seen part of it but not the rest of the episodes, I highly suggest going and watching them again. Well, <laughs> Kyle and I will have to watch it because we said if uh, Constantine gets thrown into Arrow, we will do him of solid and watch his entire season. And then, like two days later, they announced that. Like, oh, bitch. <laughs> well, now you have to. Yep. I like that we get. Um, um, and, oh, sorry. Oh, I, I like that we get Speedy in action. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yes. And they so, are calling her Speedy, so that's kind of cool. So what are you guys looking forward to the Arrow uh, new thing? Are you excited that he's finally being called the Green Arrow, or...? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah That's been sorely lacking for a long time. Since episode three, I believe. I mean, I think one of the, the goofier things that I thought when this show was originally announced, you know, I was like, well, you know, Smallville had a, a Green Arrow, so, you know, why do we need this? And then obviously this show and that version of the character are far superior. But, my, but, I mean, still, why not call him by his actual name? Why call it Starling City instead of Star City in the first place? Uh, you know, just a number of issues like that. Well, it yeah. seems like you're correcting a lot of that. So. Which is good. So. Yeah, it was weird. It was like them trying to, like, they wanted to take the concept of the idea of the comic book, but then they were like, we got to get so far removed from the comic book when everyone else is all like, comic book. Like, we like this character. So why are you just changing these weird minor things? I don't know. Are you guys a fan of the flashbacks that Arrow has? Uh, yes, no. yes. I mean, they were... I thought the first season, was they were fantastic. I felt like they were kind of forced the second season, and then yeah. obviously I think everyone agrees the third one was a little bit weaker overall. 
Yeah, but now because uh, we saw some, we saw some of that in the trailer where it seems like he is totally rudimentary, like his arrow persona. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, this new. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, and I'm wondering, like, so for season five, they can't flash back to the first season of the show, <laughs> like, because because it seems like every flashback, it it takes place, like. Chronologically, like five years before. So, well, season five will be the his last year on the island. It'll be yeah. season six where they can't flash back to first season unless they want to. Well, I, I essentially figure that the show will end after five seasons anyway because you will have exhausted the the sort of origin part of him becoming who he was. Uh, I mean, I've always just kind of taken for granted the show would probably end after that many seasons. Okay. And probably just make guest appearances on The Flash, because that show's never-ending. Yeah, well, I mean, eventually we have to expect that these shows all have a terminus. And with oh, Flash, yeah. with there being a live-action Flash movie, you have to think that as you get closer to that happening, that eventually this show does need to wind down for less brand confusion. Yeah, that is true. And the thing I'm also curious about is, like, unless they think they're going to be able to try to milk these shows for, like, nine to ten seasons like they were able to do with Smallville, which, honestly, I was flabbergasted with. Yeah, I mean, Uh, didn't uh, Smallville air during the time of Superman Returns? Uh, yes. So, I mean... I mean, that's true, but <laughs> I don't know. Although Smallville didn't have the suit or the Smallville, or... Smallville was a very removed adaptation of what that character is, whereas yeah. Flash and Arrow are very much like, we're in your face, we are these characters, watch us. You know, Smallville was more like, I don't want to wear tights. <laughs> because Tom Welling's a dick, but, you know. Yeah. Anybody else you don't like on the show? <laughs> Oh, oh, no, 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 it's not that. It's just that it's well-documented. Tom Welling didn't want to wear the costume is the only reason it never happened. And the only uh, the real reason the show was canceled is because they were like, look, man, you're going to have to wear the costume. It's been ten years. And he's like, all right, guess we don't need to make another season then. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. I had no idea with that. So you know, that goes back to my first statement. Superman's a dick. <laughs> this particular version was, yes. <laughs> I know it'd be really great if, like, uh, uh, the guy who plays Barry Allen and Stephen Amell show up at that guy's house and be like, "Dude, you should just wear the costume. Look at us. Do you know how many? Yeah, do you know how much pussy we can get now?" Uh, so anyway, so uh, Flash and Arrow will be starting up. Uh, are they starting the same week, or yes. is it one of those weird things? Okay, and then and then next, but spring we get the DC Legends of Tomorrow. Oh yeah. Yep. Can't so wait for that. Do you think these? Do you think these two series, since they're pretty much all going to be intertwined together, do you think these two series starting in October are going to be building up for that, I'm going to say their, I guess, Phase 3 show? I would think so, because, I mean, already in the Arrow uh, trailer, we got the resurrection of Black Canary. Yep, we did get that, so. And I'm sure... Ray Palmer will eventually show back up, and they're like, oh, great, now we're going to change the city back to Starling City. <laughs> <laughs> it's not valid oh, anymore. Damn it, we got to change all these letterheads <laughs> and signage. He's like, you know how long it took us to do this? It took us about four months before that other Green Arrow showed up. <laughs> you got to sound like a bad Stan Lee impression when you do that. <laughs> Excelsior! What's he doing on the Let set? me tell you about the time I invented the Green Arrow while I was stooping Kirby's wife. <laughs> He's like, I'm in, I make cameos in all comic book movies and shows now, except Fantastic Four. Well, let's be honest, who wants to be in that? <laughs> no, no one. one. The actors don't even want to be in it. Why would he? <sighs> All right, so what are we looking forward to in the season of Flash, this upcoming season? Oh, Earth 2 by far. Earth 2, Jay Garrick, and everybody else. Definitely. Now, is this, if I'm not mistaken, is this the first time we're actually getting, like, an Earth 2 in actual, like, TV form? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, honestly, the only time it's ever been remotely close to attempted was on uh, the Justice League animated show when... They uh, they accidentally got trapped in this uh, 
powerful telepath's mind. They thought it was an alternate dimension, and in fact, the characters were all based on the Justice Society. Um, mm-hmm. because yeah, they couldn't they couldn't that. use the actual characters at the time. They, the rights were kind of goofed up. But uh, that's the closest they've ever done. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, because instead of, like, uh, instead of the Flash, they had Tom Turbine. Instead of uh, Green Lantern, they had the, the uh, I think, Sentinel, Scarlet Sentinel, something like that. I can't remember for sure, but, um, yeah, they had sort of goofy, made-up versions of all those characters at the time. So it's mm-hmm. good to see the actual Jay Garrick appearing. Oh yeah, uh, when they posted that poster of just Jay oh. Garrick's helmet, I I just almost well flipped out. I was like, that is like the coolest thing ever, and it's just the damn helmet again. Or how about that poster where they recreated that comic book cover? Yes. Oh, yeah, they recreated oh. Flash of Two Worlds, and that was just gorgeous. Yeah, yeah that was so amazing. Nice. Uh, this, it's very uh, well. Obviously, right off the bat, their first sh- episode is going to be ridiculous. Just how season one ended. Well, yeah, I mean, that was an insane season finale. Yeah, it was an insane season. It was. Unless it was. they're gonna, unless they're gonna pull a thing where it's just Barry sitting at home going like, "Hey, remember four months ago when uh, a weird <laughs> thing happened?" That would be. It's a clip show. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be something new for me to hate then. <laughs> I, I, you know what I hope they do? I hope they do kind of make a joke about the Green Arrow's costume. He's like, I want a new costume too. And Cisco's like, I put white in your symbol. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> well, that's the only real difference. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like how they were really like pushing that. Like I think a couple months back, they're like, the Flash gets a new costume. I'm like, oh, so it's his symbols filled in finally. <laughs> It's not even, like, original, because they saw the future costume, so... I mean, yeah, technically, it wasn't even their idea. Yeah, they're just... Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're the... We're the we just, we're the past that steals stuff from the future. That's all we do. Well, I'm excited to see um, um, Cisco turn into his alter ego, if that happens oh. this season. Yeah, turn into Vibe. Vibe. Yeah, yeah. Vibe. That should be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that'll be... I never really uh, saw his actor uh, sort of filling that role initially. I was kind of surprised that they really went there, but you know that they even suggested it. I never really thought of it initially that Hank he could pull that off. But you know what? I'm down. Now to go off just aside real quick, has anyone been watching the Vixen cartoon shorts? Yes. I have not. Watched the first. Yeah. I watched the first episode. I was surprised it's only three minutes long. Well, it's it basically like, like one. Thing or something. I think it's like a thirty-minute episode split up across like seven or eight pieces, something like that. So, okay. um, yeah. So I mean, it's it's just the way they're doing it to to be able to offer it, you know, for free. So. Yeah. Now I'm curious. Do you think of this little uh, this little tie-in with all this stuff does successful? Do you think they will bring this character into the universe? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think even the actress who plays her is un- in the, under that impression, so... Oh, okay. She's like, what do you mean I'm just doing a voice? Fuck this shit! Well, she's traditionally a voice actress, but she said that if, if offered the chance to suit up and do it, you know, for real, she would be more than happy. Oh, that'd be hmm. cool. So, what do you guys hope to see this upcoming season? Uh, more of the same awesomeness that we got in the first season? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. As long as they um, answer. <laughs> huh? I just hope everything takes place in a four-month radius. <laughs> yeah. Everything's four uh, months. Yeah, everything's four months. Um, no, I'm looking forward to Hopefully we get to see, finally, uh, Mirror Master. Um, a couple of other villains from his rogue gallery that we did not get to see. I mean, we did get to see a shit ton, which I was very surprised with. Like, they animated a CG gorilla on TV. We don't really have a lot we can demand at this point. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which yeah. Is so funny, because I remember reading early on, they're like, oh, we're not doing that. Like, someone said, like, they, they teased Grog, but then they were like, yeah, we're not going to do anything with Grog. I was like, oh, okay, maybe next season or something like that. Well, I, I think at the time they weren't really sure that they could actually pull it off, but you know, obviously they did very well. Oh, yeah. it was spectacular! I've, I, I thought that CGI work was amazing. Like, it was legitimately scary. It was, yeah. it was a good job. They did a good job. 
Well, and, uh, I liked when they when they actually found Grodd in the sewers. Joe was just his terror was so palpable, so real. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. So, um, and then they also teased that possibly a Green Lantern character in one of the two shows, either Arrow or Flash. Yeah, that's weird because uh, you know Kreisberg and Guggenheim, all the guys that work on Arrow and Flash, they keep. They keep downplaying that, saying it, it it's not going to happen. They're like, yeah, Coast City's just a thing. We're just throwing it in there. But, I mean, they're making, I mean, like, a concerted effort to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. and Flash, they kept mentioning yeah. Ferris Air. I'm like, hello. Well, and then they even talk about, you know, the test yeah. pilot who went missing. But Imagine every, every interview they have now. It's all like, so, Flash and Arrow, what are you guys looking forward to? Look, we're not here to talk about the Green Lantern. <laughs> Well, you know, don't 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 name drop basically by talking about a pilot that's missing and have Barry go to fucking Coast City for pizza. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> and then Oliver gets on a boat at the end of season three to go to Coast City. That's where the boat's going. Oh man. Yeah, they have no excuse. No, they don't. They're probably trying to figure out it's like how do we build a suit that doesn't look like crap? Well, and that isn't all CGI. Yeah, don't make it CGI. <laughs> or green! Um, uh, I'm kind of hoping we also get, like, General Eiling's uh, monster form. This season. Oh, yeah, yeah, Shaggy Man? Yeah. <laughs> Shaggy Man? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what that's who Eiling becomes, is the Shaggy Man. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, about the Cisco naming him now. Well, you know, Marvel has a Sasquatch character, and General Eiling literally is like their version of it. He's the Shaggy Man. Okay. Like, man, I'm gonna go hide in the woods. <laughs> it's funny because the way I, like I'm saying it, but it's like Eric doesn't believe me that that's a thing. <laughs> no, I I'm I'm looking it up now on Wikipedia. I just I mean I'm not a a big of comic fan as you guys, but. Well, um, to be well, and honestly, it's okay. I mean, the last time they, the Shaggy Man was even featured was also <laughs> on Justice League Unlimited, and they didn't make him Shaggy. He he sort of had like a doomsday look about him. So okay, it's fair yeah, to fun. not have seen that or heard of it. That would be really funny if like they do introduce the Shaggy Man, and then like Cisco's all like, I don't know, we'll call him the Shaggy Man. He's like, I know it's not my best work, but. <laughs> Yeah, I like how if you're watching that Vixen's uh, short, he just sort of names her because he thinks she's, like, bangable. He's like, man, she's hot. I'm going to call her Vixen. Like, come on, man. Be, be a little bit more forward thinking here. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to think what else is going to probably happen in uh, the... Oh, of course, we're, are we getting, was it uh, Professor Zoom in this one? Yep, Zoom yep. is coming in as the villain this season. Uh, which I know they've already talked about how they're just kind of having him more of a like a presence. There's like really you can't really see anything under the mask. It's more like someone who's like. So yeah, we'll they, see what that, happens with them. Well, they also cast a voice for him, not an actor, because Tony Todd is doing the voice of Zoom this year. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And you'll know Tony Todd from like Candyman. He was the Fallen in Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. He I mean, was Worf's brother in Star Trek, so. Worf's brother is not as intimidating, I think, as the other examples, but that's okay. We're working with it, and it's all right. Hey, I, I'm on a Star Trek podcast. i got to throw that in. That, yeah. that, that was good, though. That was good, because he's all like, he played this guy, this guy was I'm evil. I'm really glad you found the time to work that in. I am. <laughs> that, okay, well, I knew about the other two voices. I did not know about uh, him playing uh, Worf's brother, so uh, that's a new fact I have. There you go. That is a new fact. I would have never put that together. Um, what about... Because in the ending of the Flash first season, we got that brief shot of uh, the woman who's playing uh, Hawk, Hawk Girl. Yes. So do you think we'll get any Hawk Girl action, or are they saving that for uh, Legends of Tomorrow? Uh, she's just, I mean, she's supposed to be on Legends of Tomorrow, but there is a team-up crossover episode between Arrow and Flash that shows that team off for the first time. Okay. okay. I like how you said hot girl, and I just thought you said hot girl. I'm like, yeah, she was pretty hot. <laughs> that hot girl. Yeah, yeah, she was pretty hot. Yeah, we don't really talk about. Okay. Yeah, I totally bang that hot girl. Yeah. 
She's a vixen. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Cisco. We have to make. I really hope Cisco names them too, and he's like, "They got wings." I'm gonna call them Hawk People. <laughs> okay. Pipe Did we down. come from a land much farther than yours, puny mortal? We're reincarnated people who were originally aliens that came to this world during ancient Egypt. Really? That sounds cool. I'm gonna call you Hawkman. <laughs> Way to downplay it, Dick. She's like. A, it's a lot better. Last time we landed on Pluto, we were all like, look, it's the dreaded chicken people, so <laughs> I'll go with the hawk. Um, trying to think what else. So, um, yeah, and then apparently, uh, I know CW said, I guess, the, the Legends of Tomorrow is going to be like their last kind of show like this. They're not planning on doing any more superhero shows, I think. Well, they're, they're not planning on making another new show, I suppose. You're right. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like drawing the line here, like, well, <laughs> we've given you three pretty great shows. Can you really expect us to do more at this point? You know they'll have people online going like, you should totally do another Smallville. I really hope at some point Supergirl crosses over. Well, I mean, I would l prefer it if it was like a, a canon crossover, but I'd say the real possibility right now because of Flash Season 2 is that she's just on an alternate Earth. Oh, I mean, frankly, they're, they're different networks. Yes, they, they share Warner Brother property, but they are different networks. They don't have to do that, and so I doubt that Supergirl is going to be written with the idea of existing in a shared universe in mind. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we just put Spider-Man in everything, too? <laughs> uh. um, i trying to think what else is there. Uh, oh, um, so what are you guys more excited for uh, coming out this season? Are you more excited for the Flash Season 2, Arrow Season, what, 4? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or the new DC Legends of Tomorrow? Gotham Season 2. No. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> No, um, I'm actually, yeah, as much as I love Arrow, I'm actually looking forward more to the Flash Season 2. I think most rational people would be. <laughs> Let's be <laughs> honest. I mean, Flash is, is, I think, probably the better of the two shows at the moment. I mean, a lot of people got soured on Arrow Season 3. I enjoyed it more than most. But, you know, oh, I, Flash... I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot, but a lot of people just gave up on it or shat all over it because they didn't really like the flashbacks, didn't think it was like a solid narrative, didn't like the back and forth in the present, whatever. They've got their reasons, but I liked it. But Flash had a more compelling reason to want to come back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Flash, I have to agree. Like, there wasn't an episode that was, like, I don't think there was a really dull episode. There might have been an episode that wasn't as great as one, but it wasn't, like, by much. It wasn't like, well, this episode really sucked. But, I mean, they had pretty much a, a pretty solid nonstop season of just, like, every time something would end, you're like, oh, shit, what's going to happen next kind of thing? Or, like, mm -hmm. you do that teaser thing at the end going, like, holy crap, they're doing this kind of thing. So, yeah, they did a really good job of just constantly keeping you guessing. Um, which, you know, Arrow does that too, but, I mean, just not to the same degree. And plus, I just think overall Flash is a bit more fun, like, especially towards the middle and end of the seasons. Yeah, they had some really dark moments, but it was cool because Barry, as the Flash and his team, I mean, they were still entertaining and fun in a way. And, I don't know, I think it's, I think the show in general is a lot more fun than Arrow, but... Arrow does have really cool moments on its own, too. Um, now, one thing we haven't mentioned yet was the fact they're actually introducing Jesse Quick into the series. Yes. Now, do you think she's just going to be part of Earth 2? No, uh, more than likely. I mean, her dad was a, a member of the JSA as well, you know, Johnny Quick. So yeah. um, I really don't see her being a character that would necessarily fit into mainline continuity, but hey... They've, they've written Stranger Things in, so it's cool. Well, with Jesse Quick, I'm hoping we're getting some more characters like Liberty Bell and, uh, like you said... Uh, well, yeah, that's true. The original Jesse Quick was the mom. Liberty Bell's... Oh, no, Liberty Bell's the mom, and Jesse Quick's the daughter, so you're right. Yeah. I, I mean, we got Wildcat that. from Arrow, so I don't see why we can't get uh, some more characters. Yeah, I'm pretty JSA. sure... The, 
I'm pretty sure DC will probably be, or not DC, but since Warner Brothers owns like pretty much all the DC properties, they're probably going back and pulling out a lot of characters that not too many people would either recognize or not to know about their backstory, just going like, hey, they're not going to make movies of these characters. We should just use them and put them in these plot lines kind of thing. It's almost like a no-brainer idea. Yeah. And Steve kills the show again. Um... <laughs> Uh, great. More editing. Yay. I've done that more than once. It's okay. Uh, so what was your guys say your favorite moments from last season on either Flash or Arrow? Ooh. Ooh. I, I really enjoyed with Arrow, I really enjoyed the mid-season finale that they did. Oh, uh, the fall? That, yeah. yeah, the fall with that fight. Because... When when that ended, I had no I I none of us knew what was going to happen. Like it was well, just sort of like, how is he going to get out of this type of thing? Well, so, I mean, a lot of us really assumed that hey, he's fighting Ra's al Ghul. Obviously, someone's going to use a Lazarus pit to bring him back, which they didn't. And I still don't really like that that wasn't addressed more. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was always under the assumption he was coming back. Obviously, he's the main character of the damn show. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, from a dramatic standpoint, it was it was really nice how they played that off. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love it every time they co-opt a Batman storyline for that show, because it always plays out really well. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jordan? What was your favorite part? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> oh, well, and that's not because I hate something, just because... Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I don't. Like, what is a I, I, part of the show that didn't fill me with rage? <laughs> there were lots of parts I liked. Um, I would say the uh, it's hard for a, me to pick a best moment. Maybe a, like a best episode is that uh, the one where Barry uh, runs so fast he goes back in time and accidentally yes. rewrites. Because that entire episode was fantastic. And then this crazy ending, and then it's like, oh, man, I'm right back where I started. That was great. That moment of just like utter confusion, but mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that yeah, that felt like a season finale inside yes. the show. Yes, it did. Yeah, I, I have to agree. That's that's I think one of my favorite Flash episodes that season. Yeah, they actually did a really good job with that because a lot of that stuff they did. That's what I lo actually really enjoyed about the Flash. They did a lot of stuff where you're going like, this should have been a season finale. Like, what do they have planned? Like, kind of thing. <laughs> Mine, personally, I mean, it's uh, going to be the Arrow Flash crossover mm -hmm. from the Captain Boomerang. Just the That's whole a... Arrow Cave dialogue between them was just hysterical. <laughs> I Yeah, I like the training that they did. Um, all of it was, that, that was a great crossover. Speaking oh, yeah. of uh, Arrow Cave, you guys saw the concept art for the Arrow Cave for this year, right? Oh, yeah. Um, not yeah. yet. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> Very uh, nice. Pull that up. So, fingers crossed they bring back uh, Luke Skywalker. Did you say I know Luke what I said. Skywalker? What? Yeah, I know what I said. Are you just making sure the listeners are listening? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. No, I, I meant the trickster, but... They oh yeah, the trickster was awesome. Back. That was great when he he gave them the like I am your father line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't see why he wouldn't uh, come back, uh, Mark Hamill, or if they write him into the show again because he absolutely he's a huge comic book fan to begin with. Oh yeah. Um, so him and him coming yeah. back and like resizing that role, you know, I mean, it's like he didn't even like it's like like he didn't even miss a beat. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he, I mean, the trickster sure was a character before he portrayed it on screen, but he created the persona of that character on television, so. And he even voices the trickster when he was in some episodes of, like, the Justice League and stuff like that, so. Mm hmm So he's, like, already embodied that character, so he's, uh, I, I would like to. I think they did a really good job with that, too. And I also kind of liked it because they did tie it into the original Flash show, Kind of that thing, was, so. That's funny how they used footage from that show to sort of make it more believable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just spliced it in. Damn. That's a cool layer. I know, right? It is. It's awesome. 
I mean, again, where is he getting the fucking money for this? He is bankrupt. Mm. Or maybe you just maybe uh, you know what? Maybe there was a boy in Gotham that just gave him some money. <laughs> well, Ray Palmer's dead. Maybe he left all his money to Felicity and I think that's what because yeah. she was named uh wasn't didn't he turn yeah, over he was, to her? Yeah, he was turning the company over to her. He was gonna he was showing her he was gonna tell her about the paperwork and then they left and they never got the chance to talk about it. I think the paperwork went through. That's that's where the money's coming from. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. It right there. But um, I like I like well oh going back to the layer I do like in the layer that there's like multiple uh, costume bays. Yes. Yeah. For new people. Oh, yeah. Kind of that way, like. like Okay, so they're doing it like that, where he'll have like you know other people to join. I just thought they were gonna just do a bunch of like he's all like, here's the one where I go underwater. Here's the one that might be resistance to fire. Here's, here's a giant the one. Penny. Yeah. Hey, when Mr. Terrific joins the team, he's gonna need a place to hang up his pants. So. <laughs> yeah, Steve, I sent you a picture of the uh, lair. Oh, okay, because I was just I actually just typed in the. Um, <clears throat> It on the, uh, the in the interwebs. The Googles. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, Google boxes sure help me out a lot here, kids. The Googles. Excelsior. Um, I do have to I do have to mention this because uh, I didn't watch it, but I heard about it. So uh, Steve Amell uh, fighting on wrestling as yeah. Green Arrow, or has that not happened yet? No, that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Was that just more publicity for the show, or? Pretty much. Did he actually I mean, fight? Did he? It, yeah, he, he got... Well, fight is... Yeah, I mean, it's wrestling. <laughs> it's no such thing as an actual fight. <laughs> but it was entertaining. I mean, he he looked good doing it, so there you go. Yeah, I you know, I heard the silliest rumor after that happened was that... Uh, or it's been circulating. It might be true. I don't know that... <laughs> That they might write Stardust in as like a minor villain this season oh, for like a one-off Christ. episode, which would be terrible. But you know, if they play him off like he's just some underground wrestler or whatever, sure, I can deal with that. It, it doesn't uh, have to like a whole episode based on him. Just do it like a cameo, like Scarecrow from the Batman movies, just quick and done and out of the way. Like I'm gonna kill you, and then he just punches him in the face. Right, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, he's like, maybe great. you should stick to wrestling. And Gotta be deeper. Again. Mm. This is why I don't write dialogue for these shows anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the hardest question of them all: favorite character. Barry. Oh hi. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh-huh. way better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, Barry might not have been my favorite character last <laughs> season, but he is now. <laughs> uh, Cisco. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta go with Cisco. He, he's uh, pretty awesome. He is, uh, but he can be grating sometimes. Eh. Not not as grating as uh, as uh, uh, Laurel Lance. <laughs> hey man, Laurel 180. She used to be terrible, and now she's like fantastic. She's getting there. And I mean, seriously, season two, she was just utter garbage. She was yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah. Thank God they made her a better character this year. Hmm. I'm waiting for her to fall in love with uh, Nissa, and because that's totally gonna happen. That's where that's going. Oh, hey, absolutely. Is that lesbian, lesbian love affair now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what I'm talking about. That's totally going to happen. <laughs> I can, okay, no. I can yeah. probably now be interested. They had that last season with her sister. and. Okay, her. again, you're talking about... I haven't even, I've watched like two or five episodes of the first season going like, why do people like this show? See, I, 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 the first season is really compelling stuff, but I can understand where it may not be something you get into, but if you stick with it, it's rewarding. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I swear to God, you guys, if I watch this entire run and you guys, and I don't feel rewarded at all, I am going to burn <laughs> people's faces off. <laughs> you don't know me well enough to find me, but good luck. Oh, I... 
will find you. I will catch you, and I will make you watch these series and go, See how bad it is? <laughs> Steve, you're too lazy to do that. No, I'm not, actually. He didn't even quote Taken properly to come after me, so I can't do it. <laughs> I can't, we can't, okay, technically we can't quote Taken because if we do, we're going to get sued because Liam Neeson's been kind of pissed off about it. All the hmm. things we put on this show, that's the one thing you're worried about doing? Yeah, no, no, he contacted me. He's like, please knock it off. I don't, I don't even know who you are. You don't know how to quote anything. And, and he's like, and to be fair, Gotham is not that bad. And I'm like, don't talk to me. I think he's just mad because he didn't get to be Rachel Ghoul in uh, Arrow. You know, he yeah, said just, that. It, it, oh, whoop. yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, he said he wanted to come back to do it. Yeah, he said if they had offered exactly. it to him, he would have, but they didn't even do that. No, then they came out with that whole, like, no, we're trying to keep the movie universe and the and the TV show universe so far away from each other because there's nowhere in the books that says that's going to work. And Marvel's like, hi, um, it's actually doing pretty well for us. Well, well, as relative speaking, I mean, you know, it's well, not I like... Count I can't count Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because I haven't watched it, so... Well, I mean, it, it's not that. It's just that there's not really that much crossover interchanging going on between the two, you know, the two mediums, so... Well, yeah, it's, I mean, hopefully they're trying to build that, I think, with the success of the Daredevil, so... Unless you hate that, too. No, no, Daredevil's absolutely one of the best things ever. <laughs> it's fantastic. It okay, oh. I, I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm just ending everything with that, unless you hate that, too, because I'm not sure. No, 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 Daredevil is absolutely magnificent. It deserves all the praise it gets. It's just that it also doesn't really have anything much to do with the universe it's based in except for the aftermath of that attack on New York from Avengers. That's it. Well, he's only one blind guy. He can only handle, like, a, you know, a four-hour, well, like, four-radius block, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not... I'm not That's not, not a knock against it. It's still a great show. It's just, you know... I'm just being a sarcastic dick now. You want me to believe that there's connective tissue to a universe, you have to create it. Oh, they will. They'll be all like, hey, remember Spider-Man? Be like, no, we don't. We can't talk about him. That's Sony. Um, they mentioned at the end of Ant-Man. Well, yeah, well, technically because they're allowed to at that point. I don't know if they're they're like, Sony's like, we're not touching Netflix. Stuff. I don't know how things work anymore. Everything's too complicated. Huh. <sighs> Man, we're going to edit a lot in this, aren't we? What do you mean, we? It's going to be me. You're going to edit a lot in this, aren't we? <laughs> there we go. Uh, nah. Okay, so what superhero do you guys want to see show up in the next uh, either Arrow, um, Legends of Tomorrow, or uh, Flash that hasn't shown up yet? Mm. Uh... Jim Gordon. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, you know, with the with the kind of classic Earth Two vibe they're going with for Flash season two, and maybe even a little bit with Legends, I wouldn't mind seeing some more Golden Age characters like Golden Age Sandman or uh, yeah. or, or or someone of that nature showing up. I mean, just Ooh, to round man. out the classic characters. That would be actually kind of cool. Yeah, I'd like to see Our Man. Yes, Our Man would be cool, except that I feel like they've addressed that before because his powers are based on taking a drug, which gives him super abilities for an hour at a time. It kind and, he, and, and but he was addicted to it for a long time as well. It became like a substance abuse thing for him, and that became a pretty murky area during publication. So, you know, eventually his son just inherited the powers genetically because of it. So that's. That's dicey to put on TV, where it's someone who abuses a substance or gets their powers genetically because of substance abuse. So. Well, what about Speedy when he was shooting up heroin? That's true. He was shooting up heroin, and then he got clean, and then they put him back off the wagon again, you know, like seven or eight years ago. They're like, Speedy, why do we call him that? Look, heroin winning was already taken by another superhero sidekick, so I went with Speedy. You killed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again. Eric, what about you? Um, stuff. <laughs> 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 um, He's like, sorry, it's right here. Eric, go to, 
Go to Wikipedia, look for the Justice Society of America, and pick a character at random. That's who you want. <laughs> All right, Starman. Justice Society of America. And Sorry, then go I'm to... not as, as savvy. Find the list. Numbers. I'm, yes. I'm right there. Just click. Um, how, how, about, a super... how, how about that Spectre, guys? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, see, they teased him on Constantine, which you would know if you'd seen it. Oh! <laughs> shit! <laughs> yes! Oh, uh, now I gotta watch Constantine just for that. Yeah, yeah, Jim Corrigan is on Constantine for a number of episodes, and they're, they're definitely, they throw it that way, that, like, there's powerful magic around him, that the specter is a thing that could happen, so. Uh, Jim Cabell would be amazing. Choose more wisely, Eric. How about the the Huntress? <laughs> you you got to be kidding me. <laughs> or Power Girl. Shut up. I don't know. Whatever. Didn't you watch Arrow at all? Huntress is in like two seasons. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, man. Edit all of that out. Uh, no, we're keeping it in. It's comedy gold. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, but yes, Power Girl would be cool, you know. But as a derivative of Superman, she'd probably show up on Supergirl before she'd show up anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. But uh, back to the whole Spectre thing. I used to be a huge fan of the uh, Shadow Pack comic book, so I'd love to see like Blue Devil or Detective Chimp. Detective Chimp, yes, that needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't see why not, since they have uh, Grog, so they could probably bring him into it. Yeah, I'm not even being ironic. Detective Chimp is fantastic, and he needs to be around. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with you. That was, I'm sorry. I didn't think that was... I was trying to be... To, uh, oh, no, I didn't think... No, no, I didn't think you were. No, no, I'm just oh, saying, okay. like, I'm legitimately excited. That needs to happen. I say we need to bring in Booster Gold. Yes. Where's Blue Beetle? Love that. The unfortunate part is that, you know, Ray Palmer was originally supposed to be Ted Cord, so you could have had Blue Beetle and eventually worked your way to Booster Gold, but Warner Brothers was like, no, sorry, you can't use Ted Cord, make him Ray Palmer. So, Which is weird, because they've mm-hmm. mentioned Ted Cord in, like, season yeah. one or two. They've, they've mentioned Cord Industries a number of times in seasons one mm-hmm. and two, but yeah. Warner Brother creative came down and said that, sorry, you can't, you can't do that, we're not, he's not on the table. So they had to. That's why the Adam suit is like an exoskeleton, and that's why he wasn't going to shrink initially, and things like that, because it was never intended to be the Adam until production began, really. Mm. Gotcha. Hmm. I remember there was supposed to be a TV show adaptation. There was like a test footage that leaked out or something a while back. Yeah, right yeah, the... that was that was during the, the Smallville era because it was test footage of the, the Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle, where the scarab mm-hmm. would bond to his skin and he would transform. Yeah. That'd be pretty epic. The test footage looked great, and I mean, to be fair, that we had a pretty decent version of, Blue, of uh, Booster Gold on Smallville. He actually was was fine, but, you know, they're, they're shying away from characters they've used before in these new CW shows, and they're not going to, they're not going to add. Oh, okay, I didn't even know Booster Gold Gold, Gold was in, uh, in another show before. Yeah, he was in the last season of Smallville. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then yeah, that's, that's uh, why I kind of I kind of phased out of Smallville beforehand, so I didn't even. Oh, know. it's okay. I mean, the last season was immensely better than the four or five before it, but it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that it was you know redemptive. Mm. But uh, but yeah, Blue, Booster Guild was on there before, and there was uh, you know Rip Hunters on Legends of Tomorrow. Well, Rip is you know Booster's dad, but that doesn't mean anything in a show. Hmm. Mm. Well, if they do end up doing Booster Gold, I just hope they get Nathan Boy. Fillion to play him. Wait, wait, I'm wrong anyway. Oh, you're going with the Nathan Fillion? Don't, don't do that to me. Don't, don't make me unleash the hatred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He hates Nathan Fillion with a passion. I do, I do. Uh, well, I gotta correct myself first. Booster Gold is Rip Hunter's dad. I had that backwards, but... Okay. But yes, I don't, I don't like Nathan Fillion. I don't actually like him. Okay, I need to ask okay. a question, and you might be on the same page with me. Firefly, how'd you like that show? That was garbage. Yes! 
Mm. Firefly <laughs> is one of the most overrated pieces of shit on television. Mm. It deserved to be canceled. The movie was absolute trash. Mm. The fans God. keep wanting them to make more and more. And it's like, you tried it once already, making more, and apparently none of you liked it, so why should we continue making more? Uh, it was nice thought. knowing you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Coming next year to the 4 Eye Radio Network, Firefly! <laughs> okay, because my, my, what I always wanted to say when I said Booster Goal, who, who I would like to see play that, I said Bruce Campbell. Oh, if he was younger, he could play that well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm. But Kyle, you would rather see Nathan Fillion in that role? I, he's got... This is going to sound weird. He's got the face for it. <laughs> you know what? I, I think he's got the face to be a, a hero. He's got a nice square jawline. He's got... Uh, He's got the look. He's got the kind of generic, hard-ass voice. You know, he could be a, a good, boring Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan should be Hal Jordan should be boring. <laughs> but uh, you know. which is, uh, are you saying that sarcastically? Because so, you do know he did voice Green Lantern in a couple of movies. Yes, yes, right. I know he did that. Yeah, yeah. And if he, if someone was going to play him in live action, I can I can understand that perfectly. You know, that's that's not a bad casting choice, despite my distaste. I said the but, same thing actually with Nathan Fillion with Hal Jordan, so yeah. I think they should have casted him in the. Yeah, the Ryan movie. Reynolds was playing more of like a Kyle Rayner type of character, whether <clears throat> or not they intentionally meant to do that. Well, that's what I thought when they first casted him. I'm like, oh, they're doing that one, and then it was like he's playing Hal Jordan. I'm like, why? Yeah. At least they didn't come out and be like, no, he's the John Stewart one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> they're like, yeah, this movie's not gonna get made now. Why? John Stewart's black. No, he's not. He's on The Daily Show. Not that one. <laughs> I would love to see a tiny, frail Jewish man play a Green Lantern. That would be hilarious. In the darkest day. <laughs> Why am I wearing a ring? I don't understand this. <laughs> uh. I think this is our nuttiest episode so, yet. Um... Alright, so is everyone else sick and tired of hearing the whole Diggle's going to be Green Lantern thing? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I made that I joke for a while. But, I mean, I, I kept saying, like, he'd be John John Stewart Diggle. Like, that was his middle name. They'd just reveal it or something. But, um, you know, that would have been funny, but it, it, it won't happen, obviously, you know. It's just that he is an African-American. He has a military background. He's Obviously proficient with a gun. John Stewart was a his sniper name, in the Marines, so you know it's John. His name's John. He, you know, it works. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of things that sync up with that. But Doesn't he could mean totally that be it's like uh, he could totally be like the thing in the Fantastic Four. Every time you had to hurt somebody, be like, it's diggling time. <laughs> it's diggling time. <laughs> what? Diggling time. He's kind of sounds sexual. <laughs> yeah. You're about to get diggled. Yeah, they're like, yeah, we're not, we're not putting that in the show. He's like, man, why not? I got a catchphrase. That's gonna be, that's gonna be epic. You will see that on a shirt. I swear to God. Now I can see them doing like at the, as soon as the series is over with, like the very end, like if they were to actually do the whole him becoming Green Lantern, just have the ring show up to him, you put on the suit or anything, you just let the fans imagine whatever else, and there you go. Yeah, that sounds or, cool. Or just when Arrow when Arrow ends, just make the Green Lantern show. And call it yeah. Lantern. Call it Lantern for the first few seasons. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's the Green Lantern. Well, I want to call it the Lantern show. <laughs> just put a laugh track in it, and there you go. Look, we know the CW doesn't have enough money for that kind of budget, so I think we're okay there. You just got diggled. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the slogan for the Lantern Show. Hey, kids, it's time for the Lantern Show. You just got niggled. <laughs> Everybody Tracy, needs a little dig diggle in them. Tracy Morgan is his neighbor. <laughs> I'm diggled. This is crazy. We need Lantern. <laughs> <sighs> And then have uh, have Bill Cosby return to television. <laughs> you see, Diggles, is what I did, is I put the pudding in your ring, and that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> he 
He's the greatest villain of the show. Yeah. He's like, Diggle me this! <laughs> Diggle me this! <laughs> He's not the Riddler, for God's sake. <laughs> Diggle me this, Batman! <laughs> Diggle me this! <laughs> it's just so dumb. <laughs> oh god! Like, what, what, why is Bill Cosby ablibbing his lines? In fact, why is he even on set? There's no show. What is he doing? <laughs> oh god! Uh, you know we're gonna get a phone call from CW and be like, "We actually like this idea. Can you boys start writing it now?" I can get you a treatment done by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Uh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, editing. Damn uh, it. Nickel move this. Uh, I think that's it. That's all I got. Oh, cool. <laughs> um. Yeah. Did uh, Did we actually have a winner for our contest? Oh, hold on a second. Out of all. Uh, for three days, we got 18 retweets and five were from you. So, hold on one second. I win! <laughs> <laughs> I, I want people to hashtag this episode with Diggle Me This. So. <laughs> that, that's the episode title, Diggle Me This. <laughs> Diggle Me This, Diggle Me That. Who's afraid of the big bad lantern? I know it doesn't rhyme, but work with my people. <laughs> All right. Steve, pick a number between 1 and 14. I will go with 13. That, that makes it easy. All right, hold on. Let me make sure this person's actually following. Yes, they are following us. Good. All right, we have a winner for the X-Files comic book. It is Renz at Renz3314. Yay! Yay! Hurrah! Yes. So congratulations to that person. He's uh, also a lucky... On Wednesday, so. He's also the lucky winner of the first Diggle Me This script uh, that will be written tonight <laughs> by me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, this is good. Ooh, we can do a, uh, we'll do a reading on the next episode or something. <laughs> oh, then I'll have my work cut out for me. I'll be like, you know we can't get all these actors to play. I was like, why not? Rocky will be in it. Same with the Terminator. <laughs> We have to get rid of the Diggles. The Diggles is out. <laughs> I'm on to the Diggles. <laughs> well, you know, what's with these Diggles, you know? He wants to fight to fight. I'll fight to fight with the Diggles, you know? He's going to be really regular or something, you know? <laughs> okay. Well, I started the uh, Diggle Me This uh, hashtag on Twitter, so... Yes! Oh, I was yes. right about to do that. <laughs> Oh, you can join in, so... <laughs> it's diggling time. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all you're going to hear from... If you ever say that to a woman, she's just going to go, Ew. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't, no, I don't want any of your diggles now. You you your diggles can just diggle right off. <laughs> Guys, check out hashtag Diggle Me This. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it tr I don't think it will trend, but I'll be excited. It'll trend with about five people who are like, "Hey, what's that?" And I'll be like, "Yes, the most trending I've ever had." <sighs> Yeah, Eric remembers the buckets. That was a good one. Oh my god, the buckets. Ah, buckets was good. Alright. I remember that happening and I was so confused up on Twitter. I'm like, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Just go with it. <laughs> I, I did. I tried joining in by posting pictures of Forbush Man from Marvel, but that didn't seem to catch on very well. Because he isn't Bucket Man, damn it. Uh, it was close enough. 
You see, the Bucket Man is part of the Diggle trend setting, and that's why Bucket Man and the Diggles need to go. <sighs> All right, so <laughs> it's better to just let you hang. <laughs> well, I just don't like dead air, and then I just want Kyle to edit more. So thanks, jerk. Ah, uh, so um, I guess that wraps up this mashup episode. I think we're gonna try to do one of these, hopefully every time the Flash and everybody has a crossover. Um. Yeah, so, probably for like mid-season finale or something like that, we'll get all of us back together and just talk about the mid-season, get ready for DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, I'm Diggle down for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diggle's now a verb. <laughs> and, uh, is it like so, Smurf? And I killed the show. <laughs> is it like Smurf? Like Smurf? Like, oh yeah, I was going to say that like the Smurf's like, Smurf-tastic! You'd be like, Diggle-tastic! Diggle-tastic! I'm going to go diggle this diggle with my diggle. Yeah, hey, <laughs> holy diggles last night, man. You left with that chick, right? Oh, yeah, when I got into the diggle diggle parking lot, we were just diggling there all the old time. And then she diggled me and my diggle bird. D- diggling. <laughs> it sounds so wrong. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, sure. I guess before I guess before we go, where can we if uh if people listen to the show and actually made it to the end, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you have survived. Uh but uh where can we find you gentlemen on the interwebs if you want to get more people to follow you? Jordan. Oh, you can find me at Deno underscore Tokunation on Twitter or at Tokunation.com where I'm an administrator. And you take all those wonderful pictures. I do. I take lots of toy pictures, which I actually did during the course of this podcast, and none of you knew or complained about it, Eric. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear the multiple uh, shutter clicks. That's because I turned it off. Oh, thank <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> For once. Hey, you don't. You don't, haven't had to edit it out of yours in a while, so, you know, it's not like I'm being a hindrance to you. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, you can find me at TrekkieB47 pretty much everywhere on the interwebs. I'm also at the Starfleet Escape Podcast at uh, SF Escape Pod dot, or SF Escape Pod, um, and also Ranger Command Power Hour at RangerCommand.com. And yeah, only on the Four Eyed Radio Network. Woo! Yeah. Steve? And Kyle, I was going to say, Kyle, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Deadpool underscore Ranger. And that's it. Uh, don't forget to follow us on at the Longbox Cast. Don't forget to check out the longboxcast.com and also the Facebook page. Give us a like. We could really use your likes and your follows. Uh, I don't want to beg, but I have to sometimes. Um, <clears throat> of course, if you're looking for me, you can find me at uh, Stephen Mooney Jr. on the Twitters. Of course, I'm pretty much the mascot of the radio. Uh, network now because I have a show coming out every week for some strange reason because this is what happens when you don't have a life kid and now coming next week is, is the Diggle Hour so look forward to that on the 4 Eye Radio Network <laughs> uh, brought to you by Revenge Lover Designs <laughs> and Kyle take us out with those lovely words or do you have a new lovely <laughs> I really I thought you were going to say lovely lips which would have been better but no Long box cast. Too many issues for a short box. Diggle. Diggle me this. <laughs> I think we should just end the shows with that now. Uh, no after the credits? Uh, oh, we could do after the credits. Well, actually... I don't um, even know if people actually listen to after the credits. I, I think some people do. I don't know. What's after the credits? <laughs> after the credits. After our credits roll on each episode, we always do just some random crap at the end. Kind of like Marvel, but not as funny. Like a stinger for like a new movie that never happened? Like Howard the Duck? Yeah. I actually watched that the other day. That was actually kind of funny. The original movie? Yeah. You got wow. a low threshold. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of time to waste, apparently. <laughs> You know, until the that new Fantastic Four came out, that Howard the Duck film was the worst-reviewed Marvel property film ever. Yeah. 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 It only took them no, like 30 years. Yeah. 
Uh, you know the guys came out from Fox going, we finally did it, guys. We're the worst movie since Howard the Duck. Mission accomplished. We could go home. They're like, sir, we wanted to make money. Oh, what? I thought this was like golf. I wanted to do it as bad as possible. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Should have just made that Diggling Time movie. It would have been famous. All right, kids. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Diggle me this. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. That's it. Uh, thanks again, guys, for coming on. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, no problem. Now we all have a new catchphrase. Yes, yes this actually worked out very well. <laughs> <laughs> this has been another great presentation by the Forward Radio Network. You can find more information at foridradio.com.